without any further ado, we have one of our one and only. Uh, if you don't know Randy and Karen Bardwell, you need to get to know them. They're amazing people, uh, godly people. Uh, I just love hanging out with Randy. Every time I hang out with him, I just feel like I have been so encouraged and uplifted. Um, they were missionaries on the field for about 30 years. 30 years, missionaries to Honduras. So he's going to come today, and he's going to bring the word. Would you give him a warm Harrison Faith welcome? Do better than that. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you. God bless you, Caleb. I told Pastor this morning there's no greater thrill in my heart and in my life than to speak about world missions, about giving to world missions, about speed the light, about uh, my passion and my heart is broken, and is on fire at the same time for the lost of realm. We have had a great, uh, a great run, uh, 30 years on the mission field. What a wonderful experience to live and, and, and in, another, in another culture, to learn another language, to, to be where God wants you to be, to see the blessings of God. And this morning, I want to challenge you to give of all your to give all you have not just speaking of money but I want to challenge you there are some people here that God is calling to be missionaries and he is going to get a hold of your heart that's why he sent me and Karen to Harrison Arkansas to retire here not because of our grandkids in town and son and daughter-in-law, it's because God wants to, to put in the hearts of people in this church and around this community a heart for the world. And you'll go out like a, like a flaming arrow shot out of the bow that God has. You see, it's going to happen. This morning, you saw our, our uh, district youth uh, leader, uh, talking about speed the light. And speed the light is our means and our method here in our church and in the assemblies of God. It is our means and method of helping our missionaries effectively serve God in the part of the world that God has called them. We are doing our part. I wonder a lot. I've been in church since I was seven days old. <laughs> Haven't missed, missed too many Sundays, been in church. And often I sit in church and wonder, why? what are we doing? We did this last week. What are we doing? We did this the week before last, and we did this last year, and we did this. What are we doing? We are a body that God has called together and brought together so that we can accomplish the purposes of God the purposes of the kingdom of God, so that we can finish the work that Jesus started on the cross. And the cross, we sang this morning, is the final word. What he did on the cross needs to be known throughout all the world. There's a scripture in Matthew, the 24th chapter, that says, 24 and, uh, and 14, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to all the world, to every nation, as a witness, and then the end shall come. Man, I don't know about you, but I want the end to come. <laughs> I'm ready to get out of here. I'm ready to see this world transformed for Jesus Christ. I'm ready to see thy kingdom come, thy will be done. This morning, there is a purpose for you and your life in this place today. I know a lot of our men are out on, a, on, a, uh, on the men's encounter, and they are encountering the Holy Spirit in a way that only men together can, can find Him. We pray that they will be blessed in a special way. But I'm so glad they're gone and the wives are here because you got the checkbook. I know you were smart enough to keep it and not send him to the encounter with a checkbook. 
You're here this morning. And we want to do our best for the Lord in giving. This morning we are looking at some scriptures and looking at our, our, the, the idea. I don't know, many of you are new to the Assemblies of God and to our church here. And the, the term speed the light might not mean anything to you. But it is a, it's, an organ, it's a program or a ministry within our youth department that for years has raised money so that missionaries can have vehicles, can have communication equipment, and other, other supplies that we need. As 30-year missionaries, we, were, we received over $100,000, me and Karen Bardwell received over $100,000 in Speed the Light equipment. We, if we needed anything, all I did was call and ask, and we were approved, and money was sent to us, and we bought vehicles, we bought sound equipment, we bought boat motors, and we bought uh, all, all of the things that we were allowed to buy with Speed the Light funds. So I'm speaking with experience this morning, speaking with the, uh, that, uh, the telling, I'm going to tell you some stories and hopefully inspire you to come up here in a little while and pick up an envelope. We need 100 people this morning who will pick up one envelope and put in it the amount that is written on it. There's no, there, there, we'll get to that part. Well, let's go on. Speed the Light is a gospel-centered ministry. It is about the gospel. It is about preaching the gospel until all the world knows. Speed the Light is gospel-centered. Studying the scriptures, studying the gospel, draws us to become more like Jesus. We don't just need a car. We need to become more like Jesus. I don't need a pickup truck to go to the mountains of Honduras. I need to make people to be more like Jesus. How do I get them to be that way? I bring to them the gospel. The gospel is good news. That's all it means. It means good news. It's good news that Jesus was born of a virgin. That he lived and, 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 and healed people and preached the, word of, preached the kingdom of God. It's good news that he died. It's even better news that he rose again. It's good news that he's coming again. That's the gospel, and that's what we preach everywhere we go around the world. Here in Harrison and down in the mountains of South America or on the islands of the Pacific Ocean, in Europe and Africa and all around the world. Jesus said these words. It's hard for me not to preach on each one of these scriptures that I'll bring to you. He said, all authority has been given unto me in heaven and on earth. Go to the people of all nations and make them disciples, my disciples. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit and teach them to do everything I have told you. And I will be with you always, even until the end of the world. This is, like I said, there's a message. There's a missionary sermon everywhere. Pastor can read, you, read the book and open it up to you and see, oh, there's a message for the church. I look at the Bible and I said, oh, there's a missionary message. Here's Jonah, a submarine missionary. <laughs> you know, any story in the, any, it's, it's missions. It's on my heart. It's in me. He said the words, go, go. That's an indication of movement. That's an indication that God wants us to get up from where we are, out of our comfort zone, out of what we want, out of, into what he wants, and he wants us to go. Randy, we can't go all the time. We can't go to the, to the mission. By the way, we're going to go. You're invited to go with us to Honduras Next July, you need to be in our meeting coming up, uh, when is it, next Sunday? October? It's this Sunday. It's today after church. <laughs> I'm glad I remembered that. Come to church and come to, come to our meeting. If you want to go with us and see the parts of the world that we, have, we have, have affected our lives and that we have affected with our lives, we want you to go with us. After church, meet us in the youth halls. All right? Oh, good. 
I'm right on top of things. Go. Tell, uh, whoops, that's not one in the notes there. That's my, uh, I'm supposed to tell the story about the sound systems. That's, the, that's what I'm doing next. <laughs> Back in, oh, 1988, somewhere, maybe 86, we were in Honduras, and there was great upheaval in the country just south and two of us in Nicaragua. And in Nicaragua, there were communists, there was a communist uh, uh, takeover of the government, and, and many people fled for their lives, and, and many church people fled for their lives. They were being threatened to, uh, and, and even killed because communism does not accept Christianity. Those two cannot live together. Well, what about in the book of Acts, brother? Anyway, I'll talk to you later about that. Uh, the these refugees left Nicaragua in droves, in thousands, and many churches would leave together. Now, can you imagine pastor calling you on, texting you on a, on a Saturday night and said, we're out of here. I want you to meet us down at the, uh, at the square, and we're going we're gonna to leave from there and go through over the hills and over down through Boat Mountain, and we're going to walk. We're walking. We're not driving. We're walking all the way down across Boat Mountain until we can get up in the in the hills there to save our lives. I've spoken with men and women in the refugee camps that did that very thing. They could only travel at night because in the daytime, the, the communist Nicaraguan communist soldiers were out looking for them in the daytime. And they would put minefields out as they got closer and closer to the border so that they, when they got near the border to cross over the minefields, we'd get them there blow up. They said, we, would, we left with nothing, just what was on our back. We left with no, with, with just grabbing up kids and leaving. And on the way, they, they would get sick and, you know, a child will die in 24 hours of dehydration. And many of them said, we buried our children under leaves and kept running. I spoke with these people. They were in, in the refugee camp at that time, and as I spoke with them, I met with the pastors, and they, their big tears would roll down their eyes and tell us the stories of those who had died along the way as they ran for their lives. I spoke with them, and they said, you see this one? Bring him in. You see the burn marks on his wrist? There were five of them in the, in the church house and they were tied over the rafters of the church and the church was set on fire and there, as the ropes burned, they fell to the floor and escaped with their lives. Others were burned alive in the building. 1988, 1987. Uh, I met with the pastors and, and uh, what can I do for you? We need clothes. We, uh, we didn't come with any clothes. You know what we bought? Women's underwear <laughs> filled up our Speed the Light pickup truck, had a camper top on it with boxes and boxes of underwear. Talking about 8,000 people in one camp, 5,000 people in another camp got there with our Speed the Light truck, crossing rivers, going through the water, going through the, the, uh, the, uh, the guards, or whatever you call them, the, the, the checkpoints and um, we talked to, I called our pastor, I mean our, our youth director in Louisiana, and I told him, I need some sound systems. I need two sound systems. They don't have to be anything great. There's something to, that the pastors can use to preach to the, to the uh, refugees. You see, saints, it's, when, when we're doing missionary work, it's not about the missionary getting it done. It's about the, the national where we're working, the Filipino, the Chinaman, the, the, the Japanese, the, the, the African chieftain, the, 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 the pastor that came over from Nicaragua. Got him a sound system and, and from Speed the Light, sound, little sound system. They begin to preach. Before you know it, we said, they said, we, can, you, can you help us build a building? Put it in the back of a, put lumber, just, uh, you ought to see the lumber. It's rough cut lumber. And we just put a poles in the ground and a roof on the wall up and, uh, and built a church for 
2,000 people to come to church. Speed the light. You, 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 if you never heard the term, you're, you're, you're kind of getting what it's talking about. Getting the gospel as quickly as we can to where it needs to be. There, those 2,000 people in one camp, 1,200 people in another camp, under a, under a roof, worshiping God. I remember a little pastor wanted to get married there. And Karen uh, made a wedding, uh, uh, yeah, wedding cake. What do you call it? Yeah, wedding cake. Big cake for them. And my, I had my mom and dad were coming. I said, bring, a, bring some clothes and a suit, some, a dress and some suits for this man who wants to get married. They brought it down. We married them right there in the refugee camp. Speed the light. Speed the good news. Get it there. You got to go. You got to go. Speed the light is about spirit empowered uh, witness. Spirit empowered. It's God's spirit, and as God's spirit illuminates the truth of the scripture, it transforms hearts, exposes sin, and invites us into, the, into God's purpose. The scripture says in Acts 1. And six, while the apostles were still with Jesus, they asked him, Lord, are you now going to give Israel its own king again? Even after the resurrection, they didn't get it. It wasn't just about Israel that Jesus died. It wasn't just about the called out ones, the, the, the Jews, the favored nation. You don't get it. Jesus says to them, it's not, you don't need to know the time of those events that only the Father controls, but the Holy Ghost will come upon you. The Holy Ghost, he, I am going to be with you, I am with you now, but when I leave, the Holy Ghost is going to come upon you and give you power. Then you will tell everyone about me in Jerusalem and all of Judea and Samaria, and everywhere in the world. Even then, their little world was, was just around the, around the Mediterranean Sea, maybe as far as Spain and the north coast of, of Africa. They knew about Ethiopia down there. But the world got bigger and bigger as as the gospel began to go out. Now it's getting smaller and smaller because the gospel is reaching every nation. It needs to reach every nation before the end time. I believe Jesus could come right now. There are still some unreached people, but the gospel is going to where it needs to go. You, can, you are going to make a difference today. Someone's going to come up here and pick up an envelope that says $43. You're going to put 45 in there just to, just to show the devil. Just to show the devil that you got two more dollars that you'll give him. You'll give to Jesus. Someone's going to come up here and do your part of telling everyone. When the Spirit of God is, comes upon you, man, you will. You, well, Brother Paul already told us, sometimes you'll dance. Sometimes you'll jump and shout and there's all kinds of manifestations of the Spirit that will come upon you. You, may, you will speak in tongues. You, you may prophesy or you may uh, interpret uh, a prophecy or, or you may heal someone because the Holy Spirit is in you. Those are good things. But even those things are not the purpose of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's so that you will tell everyone in the world. That's, that's the purpose. That's the purpose of the Holy Spirit. Man, I can jump and shout and dance and, and, and prophesy and, and do all of those things. As good as or better than some of you. <laughs> because I've done it all my life. But the most important thing I've ever done is tell someone about Jesus. Tell someone the story. Tell them. And that's what he said he would do. I remember we, uh, I, my son and I, uh, 
my, my son Michael and I, we got on a, a truck and went out of town and they, about 30, 40 minutes out of town toward the, the, the Salvadoran border and got out into a little town of San Mateo. And there they had some horses waiting for us. And we got on horses and mules with several pastors. And we rode for about two and a half hours, mules, back to a little town called Tuturupe. Now, you don't think there's a place named Tuturupe, but there is. And in, back in there, it was around uh, November. I remember Karen had sent uh, uh, candy canes, little candy canes that were wrapped in plastic. And, of course, she put a little bow on it, you know. And she said to Michael, now, Michael, you give these, to, you give these candy canes out to the children there in Tuturupe. Michael was probably 7th or 8th grade by then, and, uh, and we went through there, and, and uh, you could see the slash pines. Uh, you know what a slash pine is? Uh, there are pine trees all over Honduras. It's the national tree. But slash pines is where they make a big slash with a machete on it and, and, and make a scar on the side of the pine tree, and they, they, nail a, they put a nail in there and a little bucket on it with a pail, uh, with a bail on it, and... And it collects the turpentine that drips out of the pine trees. What's that, Dad? I said, that's slash pine. They're catching turpentine and they, they process it and sell it and use it. Got back down to Tuturupe, a little village of about maybe 150 people. And they had a small group of, of believers there. Maybe three or 400. That's a small group. And they, uh, uh, they needed a church building. And so uh, I was going back in there. And, and while I was talking to the leaders about what we would need, I was going to bring a group of Royal Rangers in there from uh, the United States. And we, brought, we were going to get on the mules and do the same thing. I said, oh, we're going to come at a certain time. I need to have uh, 25 pack animals ready. And... Uh, I need you to, we're going to, well, we're going to come in and we're going to set up tents and we're going to camp out here and build this building. What I need you to do is get some lumber ready for us. They started cutting pine trees and making two by fours and two by sixes out of pine trees. It, it, it's amazing to see them make a, make a two by four out of a, with a chainsaw right there on the ground. And heavy, a green pine two by four that's 22 feet long. And it's two, which is about three and a half, by four, which is about five and a half. That thing weighs a ton. You have them ready. Michael was passing out the, the candy canes. And he's, he, I was watching some of the kids. They, they'd hold it. They didn't know what they had. But sooner or later, one of them did what everybody does. They put something in their mouth. And as he did, and it began to suck on that clear pla plastic cellophane, whatever it is, that sweetness began to come out. <laughs> and I, it wasn't long one was poking the other when they were peeling, <laughs> peeling plastic off of the candy cane and eating for the first time peppermint candy. We got back there with the Royal Rangers the next month, about three weeks later, and there were the pack horses. We rented him from the, from the owners from, with speed the light money. Now, a pack horse doesn't really speed the light. <laughs> but it, I've never in my life seen a generator tied to the top of a horse like those Royal Rangers did. They tied a generator on the back of a horse. They, we, we had so much stuff and tools and things. We, none of us got to ride a horse. We all had to walk and all of our stuff was tied on the pack horses. Went back there and the adobe bricks were made for us. Thousands of adobe bricks. We built a building for them and put those uh, green trusses together. Oh, what a, what a job to lift up green trusses for the roof. Speed the light. Those horses were more like impede the light, but we got it, we got it back there. <laughs> when Hurricane Mitch came through and 13,000 people were killed in Honduras alone, Tuturupe served as a 
as a delivery place to all of the mountain villages throughout that area. They had a place to come, a shelter to get under. I have, I'm like Paul. When Paul came to town, he had so many missionary stories. He preached all night. They fell out of the windows and died. They, and instead of quitting preaching, he, he raised him from the dead, brought him back upstairs, and kept on preaching and telling stories what God was doing. I can't tell you everything. But that's, but that's what's in me. Go and you will, be, you will have power to tell everybody. Finally, we have this, this Speed the Light ministry brings it home to us. A personal responsibility is, becomes ours. A personal decision to engage in the gospel or in the scriptures prepares us to give an answer for the hope within us. Are you ready? Honor Christ and let him be the Lord of all your life. Always be ready. Always be ready to give an answer when someone asks about the hope within you. Saints, we have something that the world does not have. Oh, but Brother Randy, I've been going through a hardship. Oh, get over it. That's my, that's my counsel to those who will whine. Go to Home Depot. We don't have a Lowe's. Go to Home Depot. Get a ladder and get over it. <laughs> when was the last time you were tied by your hands in the church house and the church building set on fire? When was the last time you had to ride a mule to get to where you were going to church? When was the last time? We don't have anything to complain about. We have abundance. We have abundance. The poorest one among us is blessed more than those who need to hear the gospel. I was telling you that one of the joys of, of being a missionary, missionaries, it's not about them getting the job done. It's about getting, them getting someone to do the job. Me finding someone that will tell someone else. It's me asking you to help the missionaries down there. I can't give it all, but you can. A few months ago, last year, I was able to speak to the children over at the children's church, and we talked to, showed a video of, the, uh, of us going down a river in, in Honduras uh, in a pipante. A pipante is a dugout log. It's got an outboard motor on the back of it. And we went down the river with doctors and nurses and dentists and eyeglasses. And, and we went down there and we were able to go to, we were sit, stopped at several places or villages along the riverway and would have two days of clinic, free clinic for them. And then, but one place we went was the, was, uh, the Tawaka village uh, of Krausirpe. In Krausirpe, there were there was a it's a it's a group of Indian people or indigenous people who had never heard never received the gospel. Now they had heard the message of Jesus, but there was not one saved man in the church or in the village. And while we were there, I was able to lead the first Tawaka Indian man to the Lord. I gave him, my, I got a picture of it. I gave him my hand and I said, pray this prayer. And as tears rolled down his eyes, down his cheek, he prayed and accepted Jesus as his Savior. Uh, we got down there with BGMC money. That's another program ministry that the Assemblies of God children raise money to, to help missionaries. This is the youth Raising money to help missionaries. The Boys and Girls Missionary Challenge gave us money to rent the pipante. The pipante is 60 feet long. Long as this from here to there. It's about this wide. We filled it full of people and supplies and food and everything for us for 10 days. A motor on the back and someone who knows how to drive. Rented it. 
cost $2,500 for 10 days. And uh, that was a, a year went by, and a new missionary came in, and his, his assignment that God had called him to was go to the Rio Patuca, and, and, and that Patuca area and that river, and raise up churches, plant churches. Freddie and Ter- Teresa Vasquez uh, have that chore, and they called Speed the Light, and I wrote Speed the Light, and I said, you need to get Freddie a, a pipante, a, a boat and a motor, and they bought him a brand new boat and a brand new 75 horsepower motor on the back of a 60 foot long Speed the Light. Now they're building a church in Krausirpe where the man that I led to the Lord got saved and there are others that are coming in. And you, you see what, it, what I'm talking about? I did my part. Freddie and Teresa are doing their part. I met, we stayed at a pastor's house on that river who's, who's living down there with his family. Man, he fed us. He fed us. First day we had, uh, a ca- uh, what do you call it? Beef. We had beef stew. The next day we had lamb stew. The, the third day we had pork chops. The fourth day we were with him, it was a mystery meat. <laughs> what is that? Man, it was the best thing we had eaten. We, it was the best food we had eaten. Come to find out, he, see that dog out there? His name is Dollar. D-O-L-L-A-R. Dollar. Dollar trees iguanas, his big, big lizards. And, the, and he treed that iguana, and I shot him, and we killed him, and we made stew out of the iguana. Iguana is the best eaten meat you want to get. <laughs> That's mystery meat. Freddie and Teresa are down there today in a boat and motor, eating iguana, <laughs> No, it's not. It's not all like this. You just do that from time to time. Uh, they're carrying on the work, the gospel. The gospel shall be preached. It's going to be preached. Not if, when, or maybe. It shall be preached to all the world, and then the end will come. I believe that we all have a part to do, that we all can say, I've done my part. I've done what I can. I've done what Jesus asked me to do. In a minute, Caleb will come back through here. and He's going to ask you to pick up a card. I need a hundred people to come up. I need young people. I need people who don't have it right now. You have till December 1st to get to fill your envelope. I need kids that don't have a job. I need Kids that will rag their mama and grandma and and anybody else to come up here and get an envelope. I need you who are like me on a fixed income. Now I'm there. (laughs) Come up and get it. We made our pledge back in March, our faith pledge, you know. And Karen said, well, we better give something. I said, we hadn't gotten it. No, no, but we have some money we could put in. I said, that's out of our budget. That's not faith. I said, God's going to send us the money we needed. We had pledged $100 a month, $1,200 for this year. You know what? God, in one check, sent in surprisingly to us from a friend we, we know. Without asking him, the $1,200. She put it in a check, in an envelope quick the next Sunday we were here. God will provide. He will supply. If you will make a step of faith and come up here and take an envelope and say, God, I'm going to give, not only am I going to give $51, I'm going to put in 55 just because I can. And God will give it to you. God, some of you have it this morning. We will receive it at the at the close of the service but there were missionaries nearly there are over 2,000 missionaries around the world with the assemblies of God there were missionaries with with non-denominational groups there are missionaries with other denominations around the world 
doing their best to get the gospel out. Can I tell you that no one, no one does it better than the Assemblies of God missionary. One of the reasons is that we are well supplied. We are well supplied. We are taken care of. Our children are taken care of. Our our. our our uh, vehicles are taken care of. Our, our supply is without end. It comes from God. It comes through you. We're grateful for those things. What we do this morning will have everlasting effect on the kingdom of God and on people that will never be able to thank you until we get to heaven. Let me pray for you before Caleb comes. God, I thank you that we were given the opportunity to share our heart. That we are given the opportunity to say to these, they can help. Now I pray that you will move on them. That you will speak to them. And they will outgive what we expect to receive this morning. We ask these things in the strong name of Jesus, our coming King. And everybody said, Amen. Amen.